Okay, so today's lesson you can title your notes Writing Equations of Lines or Writing the Equation of a Line. What we're going to do this year for only 2017, what we're going to do is we're going to shorten this lesson big time because of Hurricane Harvey. So I'm going to give you a much shorter, abridged version of this lesson. And what is in this lesson is the only thing that you'll be required to do on our quizzes and on our tests. So if you find something on the homework that makes you do something we didn't cover in this lesson, you have my permission to omit that from the homework, okay? Now, there are three forms that we use, that most mathematicians use, when writing the equation of a line. So let's just write down the three forms in our notes. You don't even need to write down the example, let's just write down the forms. Our favorite one, and the one we're going to spend the most time in, is slope-intercept form. Y equals MX plus B. We already talked about that last week when we dealt with slope, so just quickly write it down, that way you have all three forms together. When you're in slope-intercept form, I know, Dia, it's a review, I know, I know. But some people pretend they've never seen it before, so we need to pretend that they they've, have forgotten over the summer, okay? When it's in slope-intercept form, the beautiful thing is the slope is right there. It's the coefficient of the x, so you don't have to do any work to find the slope. Next form. Standard form. This is the most formal of the forms. This form is when you get all dressed up and you've got your high heels on or your bow tie on. Oh, good, good. So standard form, write it down just so you know and remember what it looks like. These are also on your formula chart. Since standard form is the most formal and it's really dressy, there are, there are rules that go with standard form. You can't have any fractions. And the leading coefficient has to be positive, or else it's not really in standard form. So this is an example of an equation in standard form. There are no fractions in my equation, and the 5 is positive. That's what leading coefficient means. It means the number in front of the x, the one that's leading the equation. Only a. Only a has to be positive. Yep. So remember, if we want to find slope, of a, an equation in standard form, there's a little trick, and you can write this down to the side. The slope is always negative a over b. For example, if I were to show the work here, and I would be to try to find the slope here, I have to get into y equals mx plus b form, so I've got 7y equals, I'm going to put this in front, negative 5x plus 12, and then I divide everything by 7, y equals negative 5 sevenths x plus an ugly y-intercept, we don't care. This is the slope. Well, I could have just looked at my original problem, and I could have just taken negative a, negative a, over b, over b. And so if you memorize, that's not on your formula chart. But if you choose to memorize this, you're going to get the slope so fast, and those problems aren't going to take you very long. B can never be the leading one. Good question. It has to go, the order does matter. The order does matter. So if you see Y first, I don't know why it's not catching up. If you see Y first, that's an equation, but it's not in standard form. And my computer is freezing on me. Okay. All right, the last form, just put it in your notes so that you have it, but we're really not going to be working much with point-slope form unless you want to, okay? This is what point-slope form looks like. You use it when I give you a point and I give you a slope and I say write the equation of the line. You can use point-slope form. All right, today I'm going to teach you using slope-intercept form. So this one is useful, it's usable, but we're not going to focus on it this year. So you may write it down just so that you have all the information on your notes, but you don't need to worry about it too much. This is where the slope would be, and this is where your point would go if you're trying to plug a point into the form. All right, so let's try a few examples. We are going to, well, I'm going to do this very quickly because this is a review. You pretty much already did this when you did the slope lesson, okay? 
So take a look at these. What's the slope? Three. What's the y-intercept? Two. This, this is the only ones that are tricky. Number two and number three. Y equals seven. What's the slope of that? Like, I, there is no x. So think of it as this. Y equals zero x plus seven. Believe it or not, the slope is zero and the y-intercept is seven. You can also just kind of visually graph it. Y equals seven. It means you go to the y-axis, you go to seven, and you, you're at seven and you have to stay at seven forever and ever. You're stuck at seven for all of eternity and that line has a slope of zero. Same thing with number three. You could kind of graph it. You go to x equals negative 11. You go there, you put a dot there, and then you stay at negative 11 forever and ever and ever and you're not allowed to move. That one does not have a slope of zero. That one has a slope of undefined. And that one does not have a y-intercept. It's parallel to the y-axis, so there is no y-intercept. Neither of these are in standard form. Neither of the, oh, sorry, the last one is. Number four is not in standard form. So don't try to use your trick. Just make sure you solve for y. So I'm going to divide everything by five. So the slope is three-fifths. The y-intercept is two-fifths. And then here, I could use my new trick, negative a over b for my slope. But then to get my y-intercept, I would kind of still have to do the work, if you can tell. It'll be eight. It'll be eight. Okay. Let's do this example. Write an equation in slope-intercept form. Okay, so... I give you a slope and I give you a point and you need to be able to produce an equation, the equation of the line. Like I said earlier, we're going to stay in our happy place. We're going to stay in slope intercept form all unit long. Thank you, Harvey. 2017, only slope intercept. Okay, so what we're going to do is take our favorite form to write an equation of a line and we're going to do some substitution. Instead of m, we're going to put 2 thirds. Instead of y, we're going to put 9. And instead of x, we're going to put 3. We're going to plug it in. We're going to use substitution. 9 equals 2 thirds x plus b. Our entire goal here is to find b. They did not give us b. They didn't give us the y-intercept, so we have to find it ourselves. What's wonderful is um, these will cancel, or you're welcome to put it in your calculator, 2 thirds times 3. You'll get 2. And so this just says y equals 2 plus b. Subtract 2 from both sides. Yay! b is 7. We found b. b. 7 is not the answer. It said write an equation. So our equation would be y equals m, because they gave it to us x plus b. If it's negative, it'll be y equals mx minus b. Anyways, that's the answer to that one. Let's try another one. Write the equation of the line that contains 3, negative 8 and is perpendicular to the line y equals 1 fifth x minus 4 in slope intercept form. Okay, so to write it in slope intercept form, we want to have a slope and then we, we already have a point. We need a targeted slope. We need to know what slope we need to use to write the equation of our line. We want to be perpendicular to this line. What's this line's slope? One fifth. We spent a whole day writing opposite reciprocals, practicing how to do an opposite reciprocal. So the opposite reciprocal of one fifth is negative five. Now I have a targeted slope, and now I have a targeted point. So I'm going to do y equals mx plus b. This was my y, this was my x, this was my m. I'm going to clean this up. Negative 8 equals negative 8 plus b. I think we know, oh, that's not an 8. I added them. Wow, Miss Tanton, good job. Negative 15 plus b, there we go. That was fun. 
So now we have 15 minus 8. Wow, that was the same y-intercept as the last problem. Who designed this lesson? Just kidding. All right, so that is not our answer. Our answer is y equals m x plus b. So here's a good example. You see this one on your homework, and it says write it in standard form. And you go, nope, it's 2017, and Hurricane Harvey happened. So no, I'm not going to write it in standard form. I'm going to do what Ms. Tanton told me, and I'm going to write it in slope-intercept form. Look how much of a break you get. Oh my gosh, we're done. They gave us M, they gave us B, and we're smiling because of Harvey. Okay. Alrighty, given the following information, write an equation in standard form. If I see that on my homework, I'm going to cross it out because I know it means write it in slope-intercept form. Y equals MX plus B. Subtract 5 from both sides. B equals negative 2. Y equals 5X minus 2. Easy. Okay, given the following information, write an equation in slope-intercept form. This one's a little different. They didn't give us a point and a slope. They just gave us two points. So what do we need to do first? We need to find a slope. Good thing we had a lesson on slope last week. I'm going to circle my x's and underline my y's. We know slope is delta y divided by delta x. So I'm going to do y minus y divided by x minus x. I'm going to do negative 6 divided by, Ms. Tanton can do mental math in her head. Okay, good. Whew. And then that is going to reduce to, yes, good. Okay, I can succeed without a calculator. Negative 3 sevenths is our m. That's our slope. That's our m. Now, the beauty of this is I can pick either point. I can pick whichever one looks better to me because the line's going to go through both of the points. I'm going to pick this one right here. So I'm going to y equals mx plus b. My y is 2. My m is pretty ugly, negative 3 sevenths. Here's my x, y equals mx. We don't know b. We're trying to find b. We don't know b. Oh, thank goodness. Look at that. My sevenths cancel. This is pretty. 2 equals negative 3 plus b.